coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. All right, shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pound, man. This is going to be my interview with Goldie. You know, uh, y'all just heard the story about him. This is him, the man, the myth, the legend in, in the flesh. Introduce yourself, man. Tell him who you are and tell him, you know, a little bit about yourself. Hey, good morning, people. My name is Goldie. And uh, I'm an ex-con. I did 26 years, came home in 2018, April the 4th, which was truly a blessing. Because being incarcerated the majority of your life, you never really know when you're gonna get the opportunity to, to be out here in this beautiful world. And my transition from being labeled a convict to now a citizen is nothing but a blessing. And, and uh, you know, my life started with me making poor decisions at an early age. And, and you know, it just, that I realized that the choices that we make in life, you know, we're determined our destiny. And the choice that I made back then at the age of 22 determined my destiny. But I was determined. Even though I went in with a sentence of life in 22 years, I was determined over the, over the things that I experienced inside that that, that wasn't going to be my life. That I'm a strong believer in faith. And I knew that one day that the good Lord would bless me with an opportunity to be where I'm at now. So, you know, I'm thankful for a lot of things. I really am. You know, um, I'm thankful for this opportunity, man, to be here with my man, Banking. You know, someone who I met back in 2016, and it's and it's funny because, uh, you know, everything. I'm a firm believer that everything in life happened for a reason. And when I met Banking, you know, we really wasn't cool. You know, we wasn't. Uh, he didn't know me, and I didn't know him. You know, we sort of. <laughs> We sort of met from bumping heads. It's crazy because being inside the things that things that me and my bump heads about, you know, it's just it's, it might seem fibulous to to people who don't understand the life of being inside, of being incarcerated for a long period of time, and, <clears throat> and we bumped heads over ice, something small like that. Ice. Just imagine that. You know what I'm saying? Just imagine just, uh, you know, being locked down and you ready to go to war with this individual or ice. I told you, you know what I'm saying? The things that you do, the things that occur inside is sometimes can be extremely small and extremely fibrous, you know what I'm saying, to the next man. But at the end of the day, you know that. We made it through that episode. We made it through the episode and uh, we became real close. We became real close and the positivity that accumulated in our relationship, that was a blessing within itself too because he helped me in a lot of ways inside. You know, we both fight trying to, you know what I'm saying, come home and at this point in time, I had been gone like 24 years and he was on like, 28 years, so it's fast from that. You know, being inside for that period of time, decades. You know, want to come home, but dealing with dealing with all the bullshit. You know, what I'm saying that a man got to deal with being inside, being incarcerated. But um, we helped each other. We helped each other through through a lot of tough times do a lot of tough times we really did and um and like I said you know I'm glad that he is out here you know trying to be a better man than what he was inside and he is and so am I so that's so that's a blessing 
and uh, just being able to have this opportunity right now, you know, it's a blessing. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, man. Um, I was I, in the stories and stuff that I told when I was uh, talking about you or whatnot. I told them about you know the, the transition that we made, man, from bumping heads over the ice and then you know becoming cool or whatnot and how we used to congregate with each other. You know, you know, tell them about uh, like you had you had your selling and how your selling used to sometimes you know make the wine. I had selling. My Sally made the wine, so we used to drink together and just socialize and talk about uh, days about being out here like we out here right now, you know what I'm saying? We done made that a reality now, but back then, it was just a fantasy, you right. know? It was no. a fantasy, man, no. but we went through a lot of things together, man, so, you know, kind of like give them your version of some of those things we went through together that created the bond that we have right now. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And it's uh it's funny that you say that uh back here because uh like you said man you know my seller you know got named big worm you know he was a good brother he was a good brother you know what i'm saying you know love making the wine he made some damn good wine too, <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying and so you know doing things like that inside it it helped us to get through certain situations you know and get our mind away from you know saying the bullshit that was around us right you know and and, and, and your seller jerry you know what i'm saying you know, they used to be in the competitive, you know what I'm saying, with the one who made the best wine, yeah. but to be honest with you, both of them made damn good wine. Yeah, and um, shout out Jerry, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's still in there, in the struggle. 40 years and counting, man. So shout out to Jerry, man. Hopefully he get his liberation, his freedom soon. He's still in there fighting for his freedom, man. 40 years and counting. That's what it is, you know what I'm saying. Just stay yeah. strong, Jerry. Just stay strong. And, uh, <clears throat> and, 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 and it's funny, like you said, that uh, Nan and I reflect back on some of the things that um, I went through inside. And, and and one of them was just fighting for my freedom and having the support of my family. Because that means the world to a lot of guys inside, the support of your family. If you don't have that, you have nothing. And you know, I'm so thankful that that's what I had. And, and they fought for me every year. Every year they fought for me. And my 13 year of going up a road that's when I knew that I was gonna make it. And my sister, you know what I'm saying, going to the parole board, talking to different advocates outside, you know, trying to help me. And, but I just knew I was gonna make it. You know, and thing about going to parole inside, they can take you up in February, and you might not hear nothing until nine, 10 months later. You know True. what I'm saying? That's the most stressful part of, well, I'm going to say me. In 2018, I went on parole in February. And I just knew I was going to make it. Because I knew the man that I had became over the years. You know, you know just the change in my heart. In my mind, I knew I was gonna make it. And just not only that, just my people fighting for me. And I went up in February of, let me bag it up. I came home in 18. I went up in February of 2017. And in the process of me waiting on A's decision, months had went by. And I'm getting scratched out. But still doing some of the things that that I know that I should have I shouldn't have been doing. You know, and just still having fun. Having fun inside, but knowing that your life is ready to change, Gold. You know, and back when my cellar worm. You know, like I said, you know, we he make damn good wine. You know, we make damn good wine and just, you know, need something to take you away. But when I went up, I had made a, a constant decision within myself, said that I'm going to back away from the things that that I do in here. Because I know, I know it's time for me to change. And being stressed out, you know, it's just that you want to make certain changes, but 
certain things you can't let go of. You know what I'm saying? Because you're still in this environment. And, you know, me and my son, we was cool. We was cool. And I said, you know what I'm saying? I'm going I'm to bag away from this, you know, getting my drink on this side of here because, you know, there's other things I can be doing. You know what I'm saying? Because at the time that me and my son, we would have seen eye to eye. And that's a hard thing, too, being inside, being confined to a cell with another individual. That y'all might be cool at first, but when the compatibility changes, it's time for a change. You know, and so I didn't make the necessary change that I said that I should have made at that time. Waiting on an answer, you know, and uh, like I said, you know, still confined with this guy. You know, but like I said, was a good guy, but still, you know, our relationship had changed. And still, you know, talking to bank on a daily basis. You know, we encouraging each other. You know what I'm saying? Still doing our thing. And so, one particular night, one particular night, you know, going against my better judgment. You know, me and my sale partner, we drinking. You know, banking, the sale partner coming down. You know, we having fun. You know, we, we drinking, getting our drink on doing something that I said I wanted to do because I'm still waiting on my answer at this time after 25 years you know, and, uh, when I really reflect back on that right there it 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 hurts me because the what it cured from how can I say this right here going against my better tradition, my better judgment. I said that it's time for me to change my ways. And by me going against something, by me going against the grain, that the situation got very, very hectic. I'm gonna use the term hectic right now situation got very hectic because <clears throat> me and Worm <clears throat> we bumped heads we bumped heads in a way that when when a beef come up out inside that it's either you or him you know and so we drinking and, and things got crazy and, uh, and as I was saying that um uh, about me and my set of worm things that got real hectic and uh, and why it's tough for me right now because you know I'm waiting I'm waiting on I'm waiting on an answer from the road board been waiting at the time like about six months and I'm still doing the things that I said I shouldn't be doing and one of the things was that I was saying that you know my set big worm you know, we was cool at one point in time, but our relationship changed, but we were still, we were still combined together. <clears throat> and still doing some of the same things together, which, which I know it wasn't a good decision on my part. So this one particular night, you know, we drinking, you know, having fun, you know what I'm saying? Shooting a bobo, talking shit. And, and one thing about choices in life, you know within yourself when you're doing something, when you're going against something, going against the grain. I'm gonna say that going against the grain of your own word. <clears throat> and so this one particular night, you know, bank it comes down. You know, we, you know, get nice drink on. You know, my sale partner worm step out the sale. Go to the phone. You know, and 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 worm love to drink. You know what I'm saying? He loved it making, he loved to drink. You know, he stepped out the cell, me and Bankers in there talking about freedom. You know, he, he, he is so excited about, you know what I'm saying, me being released from parole, and I haven't got no answer yet. He just know, just what I know, that in a day now, you know what I'm saying, that I'm gonna get the call, you know what I'm saying, to the watch command office to receive my letter of granted parole. So we was having fun, and um, and my set of big worm come back in the cell. He like go to where my wine at. I said, Worm, you don't drunk all your wine. And at this time, you know, we both, you know what I'm saying? Everybody look tight. Everybody look tight. 
know what I'm saying? So uh, I sort of blow it off, but he continued to go on and on. And so you can tell inside when you, you can get that vibe when things ain't right. And I can tell by he was so adamant about saying that he had something and he didn't have nothing. And he's ready to accuse me of taking something from him, which is the worst thing you can do. You know what I'm saying? But at that time, though, you know, I told him, you know, I'm so adding my surprise, where you don't have no more wine. He rolled out. Me and Banks didn't sell. He rolled out and come back about five minutes later. He got some kick with him that, you know, this been the pod for probably about a week. I don't know the chump, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, he's been in the pod about a week. He come back there and there in front of the door. And right then, I know something ain't right. <clears throat> I see the expression on Banker's face. So where I'm coming next, go, man, I'm tired of this shit right here, dog. Then right then, you know what I'm saying, I know that it's going to be on. But remember what I told y'all, choices. I made the choice to go against what I said that I was going to do. You know, and so one word led to another. Now I'm sort of feeling offended because he's accusing me of taking something from him. So, and, 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 and let me tell you about Big Murray. They call it Big Murray for a reason. Big Murray weigh about 420 pounds. It's stronger than a bull. You know, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm a nice size guy myself. You know, but, uh, but Big Murray, I mean, it's 400, 420 pounds now. Stronger than bull, under the influence. You know, you know, and, 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 and like I said, one word led to another. So when he accused me for one too many times, I filed on him. You know, when I filed on him, you know what I'm saying, he stumbled a little bit, you know what I'm saying, and we lock up, and I tripped over something in the cell. You know, the cell's on it so big. And you got these two big guys going at it. So, you know, it's, it's things gonna get, things ready to really get hectic. And so, I don't know what I slipped on, but I slipped on something. And I slipped back in on the bump, the bottom bump. And it's 420 pound bow. <laughs> bow, yeah, that's what it is, you know what I'm saying? Don't talk me right, you know? So, I'm trying to maneuver, I, I bump on them, you know? He throwing some hell of a blows at me. You know what I'm saying? He connected pretty good too. He connected pretty good. So at the time all this is going on, only thing I can think about, what have you got yourself into gold? Here you is. You waiting on a parole house. You don't want up in front of these people 13 times. 13 times. Your people you know, fought for you every year. And here you is, pent down, with this 420 man on top of you, throwing haymakers out of this world. You know what I'm saying? And what's going through my mind at the time is, damn, I'm not going to be to make it home. You know, the feel uh, that he could have killed me at that moment, exactly went through my mind. You know what I'm saying? And I heard Bank in the background, so what is you doing, where? Y'all stop that. But, but he, he's really not making no move. And I don't understand at the, why, at, at the time why he's not making no move. But it's just, like I said, it's just everything is happening so fast. And I, like I said, I'm still trying to get this bad off of me. You know, and like I said, he putting it on me. I admit, he, he, he really putting it on me. You know what I'm saying? And so, brother in the park. Name Chris, I hear him running in the cell. Get off him. Chris a big guy too, big strong guy too. So he pulled and him off me. You know what I'm saying? Then I see the guy that wearing me had brought to the cell, some young cat. You know what I'm saying? Bank is screaming on him. Now I realize, now I know why that he really couldn't do what he wanted to do. You know, and so we the Worm is off me now this time. 
I can get up. I said, man, what the fuck is you doing? And I can feel the blood running down my face. And I'm like, look at myself in real. I said, damn, where you tried to take me out, didn't you? That's the only thing I can remember saying the time you tried to take me out, didn't you? You know what I'm saying? And then so it was just, at that moment, you know, I heard a couple voices. One of my man banking, he was like, man, what is y'all doing, man? You said it, where you wrong, blah, blah, blah. You know? But at the time, I'm just, there's so much going through my mind. I'm looking at myself. I forgot about my freedom at this moment. Because now, I know this guy had to take, was, 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 he was trying to take me out. So the first thing that comes to mind, your mind inside when something like that happened, you gotta do what you gotta do comes again the choices you know I'm going on eight months waiting on them I asked in front of the road board knowing my heart that they might let me go home and now I gotta make a decision on how I'm gonna handle this right here with word so he pillow two cats come to the pod say a talk with me thank you he let me to go. I know how you feeling, man. Because I know how I would be feeling. You know, man, he's a man, but you gotta look at him. You ready to go home. And you know, just like I say, the words of a wise man at the time, because man gave me a lot of good knowledge back then. You know, he, he helped me through a lot back then. And that was one situation where he really helped me through because I was stuck in a rock and a hard place. I really was thinking about my family, my freedom. Here I am, I done came this far, and I'm ready to give it all back. I'm ready to give it all back because of a choice that I made to do something that I said I wasn't gonna do no more. And that's what life is about, choices. You know, I destiny is determined that the choices that we choose to make. And them 24 hours, I can say 26 years that I was incarcerated. Them 24 hours was the toughest in my entire incarceration. out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.